everybody. Um, some of you have asked for my uh, rehearsal slides video, and um, there have been some updates that I wanted to put into it, so I'm making a new one. So um, in PowerPoint, the application, not the web app or like the browser app, this is the application that you have on your computer, you will be able to do this very quickly. So go into PowerPoint, new presentation, and I usually pick a, uh, you know, a template over here. We'll just pick this. And this is going to be, there's going to be a home come in um, by Kyle Pedersen. Uh, my Falcon Singers are currently working on that right now. Um, and then I'm going to go to new slide. So this is where we're going to start. And I usually delete these text boxes just because they get in the way sometimes. Um, and they cover up what's, what's in there. So first, I'm going to grab... Um, my PDF and what you can do with a PDF is if you're using a Mac you can just a Mac or you're using Adobe Acrobat you can export out as a JPEG and you need to use JPEGs um, if you just use the PDF um, it's just going to uh, it's just going to show the first page and not the rest of the document if you try to drag that PDF right onto um, uh, PowerPoint presentation um, and then file export again as a JPEG or the other way of doing this is that there are J there are J uh, PDF to JPEG converters online that you can use and I'm just going I'm, but I'm just exporting it out um, the other uh, uh, one other way to do it is that you've got your JPEG open you have the sidebar here I think I'm not sure how this works on PCs um, but you can just drag that one page out of the sidebar and drop it right into your PowerPoint. So um, that's those are those are three ways to do it. You can export using um, Preview Adobe Act Acrobat as JPEG. You can use an online JPEG uh, PDF converter, or um, if you're using a Mac, um, you can just have the sidebar open and you drag the page that you want from the sidebar thumbnail right onto your PowerPoint presentation. So I'm gonna go with the JPEG route uh, just because that's gonna be the most universal for everybody. So I'm gonna start with page three and I'm gonna drag page three right onto my screen. Um, and I'm gonna start pretty, pretty easily here. So I've got, I'm gonna start cropping and I'm hit, the crop button is right up here um, under picture format, the crop button's right there, and I'm just going to crop down exactly what the what the choristers would be singing, and I'm trying to eliminate as much dead space as possible. And then once you're done sizing it, you hit crop, and then we can make it bigger. And there we go. So that's one part. Same thing. I'm going to pull page three in, crop. And do the next system. And just make sure that you are keeping all the lyrics in there. My uh, my my scan here was a little bowed out. I didn't use a scanner. I used a scanning app on my phone. Um, so it didn't compress the, <laughs> it didn't like press down the pages a little bit. So there, there are, a, there's a little like bowing to them. Um, and then page three again. And I'm going to grab that bottom system. Um, crop the top. Crop the side. Crop the bottom. Cut out that piano part. And crop the sides. Um, and there we go. And so now we've got our three systems of music. We can size these down just a little bit so everything looks kind of even. Um, it's... it's I mean, not that it truly matters. It's just visually, it's just not, it bugs me when it's not even, when they're not close in scale. I'm going to move all, all three of these over just a smidge. And now I'm going to bring in my audio. So I've got, um, I'm going to bring in the, my SATB audio and drop it in. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, it's right there. And I'm going to insert a text box. And um, I think it's right underneath my face. Yes, it is. Grab that text box. I'm going to draw a text box right underneath my um, audio symbol there. And this is SATB. Wonderful. I'm going to just move it right up below it. I'm going to grab my Soprano 1. 
pull my soprano one in now the soprano the the next audio file always just covers up the old one it's not like it's replacing it it's just covering it up and i'm just going to move it right there and then i'm going to click satb i'm going to copy and then i'm going to paste and move that right below and rename this sop one same thing i'm going to grab my sop two drag it on covers up the satb icon just drag it off I'm going to now paste again, same thing, drag it down, call this SOP2. I'm just gonna move that, move this guy over so it's lined up. And I'm gonna grab my alto and you, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna keep, try to go through this as quickly as possible. Um, this is possible to do with Google Slides. It just takes a lot longer with Google Slides. You have to pre-trim all of your audio and make separate audio files per page and um, just takes a, takes time. Whereas this, you can uh, have the audio, you can trim the audio right in PowerPoint. And that's, that's what I find most powerful about it. Tenor, right down, and bass, and then and then you bass, drag bass down, and B, and not quite enough bass, great. Now, um, we need to trim our audio to where everything is. Um, so we're gonna go to, click on our audio, and we're gonna click on playback. And the trim audio is right here. So I'm gonna trim our audio to where our choir, where the music starts on the page. And let's see. Nope, keep going. That's piano, 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 piano. There's gonna be a homecoming. Right there, that's where, where it starts and let's figure out where it ends. And that's where it stops. So we bring it over. Trim. Next one. Whoa, things got weird. And here we go. Trim the next one down. So we're going to find where those sopranos come in. There's gonna be a homecoming. Yep, right there. So bring, bring over the playhead there. We gotta figure out where where the tenors and basses come in. That's it, and bring it over. And so we don't have to read. We don't have to figure out where everything is every time. See how this one's at negative uh, uh, minus two thirty five or one oh five um, for the end bit, and then we bring this over, and it's at fifty. So we just have to remember fifty and one oh five trim. So now we can go to our trim audio and we just move the yellow to 50, looking at the time code. And then we have to bring this one up to 105 or 205, whatever it was. 105, good. Next one, do the same thing. Trim, 50. One oh five. So as I'm so what I'm doing is I'm looking at this time code. And we'll do I'll do it two more times. Done. So one of the things that I found out is that when the students are viewing these in the web app the playback window is really, really small. So to change that, you extend the icon. So you extend the icon out. So the playback window is bigger in the web app. Here, it's nice and big and we can, we can like, you can see I can, I can, I can go to a different time, time code and playback. In the web app, it looks very different. So um, we just do this. It makes it really easy. The kids can, the students can like put in what they want. Now, I'm looking at this. There is a pickup to this measure. There's gonna be a home coming. So I want to get that. There's gonna be right in front of this, right in front of that. So I'm gonna go back to page two. I think it's page two. Let's double check. Yeah, it is page two. So I'm gonna drag page two right on, 
and I'm going to crop page two so I just have that anacrusis, that pickup to our um, to what we have on our page right now. And I'm going to leave the bar line in, but I'm just I'm going to cut out all that. Yeah, I, I know it's like you're if the kid, the students should be counting. Mm. Um, we'll see if I can have space for it. And uh, crop. Now I'm going to size it up so it's around the same size. And then move it, and I'm I'm just going to cover up that time that that signature there, and there we go. Now we've got the pickup to this measure. Um, so just to be safe, I'm going to click on both of these. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to bring to front, just so that we see the full icon, so the playback controls aren't behind the photo. It's it probably won't matter when it's in the web app. I just been doing that. Um, okay, so now that you've got everything trimmed, you've got everything in the place, you've got the sizing done, the last thing we have to do is click on, we're going to click on each one of our playbacks, and we need to make sure that we are, we are playing these when clicked on. Um, the web app really was not happy when it was in sequence for whatever reason. Um, just having them set to when clicked on worked out the best for my, stu my students. Okay, we have everything set. Now we can duplicate the slide. I'm going to right click and duplicate slide. So now all of our settings in our, our playback controls are set. We're just going to re we could put in the new music and uh, we'll go on, move on to page uh, four, put it on page four. And just to really quickly, just going to do these systems real, real quick. We're going to crop, crop down, crop up, and up. Yeah, that's what we get. Um, there it is diggity done and then you'd have to go back in and find where it is and the and each each of the audio files are already there and we go audio playback we go to trim and you figure out where this next part is and it's basically leaves off where we stopped and then we move over and find where it ends just a little bit back so really is just a very quick almost right there trim same thing next one I don't need to go through it anymore we just go right to where we left off and then figure out where we need to stop almost perfect and there it is and that's our new time code 115 and 106 and you would do that for the rest of your to the for the rest of your audio tracks and you just keep going 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 until your piece is done you don't need to do the whole piece either you can just do the new sections of music there are um this piece is pretty repetitive so i only do what's new if there's any repeated sections i just say you know you know they've they've learned it already and when we're doing when we're practicing the full piece for for performance then they can do all the repetitive bits and figure out how it fits together. Um, but when they're learning it and learning it by track, this is a great way for them to learn it part by part by rote, um, just by listening to their track and what's on the page. And my section leaders are sharing their screens and sharing this slide, these slides, so that everybody's in the same place. Nobody's like on page four when everybody's like on eight, page eight and they just haven't been paying attention. It's all right there, right on the screen. So now that you're done with your rehearsal slides, you go right to share, and uh, you can share this to your OneDrive or your um, Google Drive, and this is Homecoming, Homecoming uh, 2, whatever it is. I already have another one in there. And uh, return, we just go save. <sighs> and uh, then you, have, so you hit the share button again, and you've got the link. And you can copy this link, anybody with the link can view, and then you post this link to your Google Classroom. You post this link to Schoology. If you're posting it to Schoology, make sure that that little, like, um, what looks like a newspaper square is turned off so that this opens in a new window. With Google Classroom, it should open a new window automatically. Okay, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, um, nigel.tangretti at lcps.org. 
and uh, yeah, there's plenty. I mean, this this is the this is my finished product of the uh, of ho the homecoming um, rehearsal slides, and I really try to take advantage of having the pickup to these systems right there. So there's no like trying to turn pages and figuring out what was before it. Just have it right there. All right. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.